Recently, I stopped climbing because I injured my finger and I was struggling to figure out what training I can still do for climbing. I came across a video from Hooper Spada where he mentioned that training the deadlift is actually very helpful for climbing. I was intrigued by it since this was my first time hearing an expert making the connection between the deadlift and climbing. Fortunately, I was still capable of gripping a bar with my injured finger. So I decided to reach out to a very special expert in person for advice. Hooper Spada! Yeah. Howdy, howdy, welcome. Happy to be here. Why is training deadlifts beneficial for rock climbers? It really has three huge benefits for climbing. One is the pure strength component. Especially with the hamstring strength that you get, it's going to help you immensely with your heel hooks and any kind of strength that you need for cave climbing. It's kind of looked as like frowned upon, especially with the leg strength. You're going to add weight to yourself, but really you're increasing the health of your body, so you're going to decrease chance of sustaining injuries. The second part is a deadlift is such a complex movement that learning to do it properly is really going to help you learn how to control a lot of tension. Learning to engage multiple muscle groups is really vital to climbing, especially like if you're cave climbing or doing anything more dynamic. And a deadlift is a very compound exercise, so it's going to activate your mid-back, your core, your glutes, and your hamstrings, and even your quads. And finally, being that huge compound exercise, it actually will upregulate some really important anabolic hormones such as testosterone and human growth hormone if those are floating around in your bloodstream are actually gonna help with building so you're gonna help heal from like other injuries or they're gonna supplement your other training and climbing you do to help make your fingers and your forearms stronger to make you a better climber there's a conventional deadlift and there's a Romanian deadlift so what's the difference and then which one is more recommended for rock climbers there's actually a different starting point the Romanian deadlift you want to actually start with the weight in a standing position so your first motion is lowering and you don't go very deep. You go like to the bar about crosses your knee and that's it. With the conventional deadlift, you're lifting the bar from the ground, standing to that full upright position and lowering it back down every time. The reason I actually prefer the Romanian deadlift is for two main reasons. One, it's a lot easier to learn, especially if you're newer to deadlifting. With a conventional deadlift, the first part, which is the squat, and then you go into hip hinge movement, whereas the Romanian Romanian deadlift it's just a hip hinge so it's a lot simpler to learn the second part is because the conventional deadlift targets the quads and the glutes a little bit more versus Romanian which is going to target the hamstrings more it's a lot more appropriate for climbers not only the heel hooks but really with cave climbing if you can really engage your hamstrings and keep your hips closer to the wall it's going to take a lot of that weight out of your arms so the translation of the Romanian is just closer to climbing climbing to me than the full deadlift. That's amazing. How about I'll go to the gym and then try out the Romanian deadlift and then have you correct my form. Let's, Let's do it. Do. We'll learn the Romanian deadlift. If your thumbs are touching your thighs, that's perfect. That's a good width away. And your feet should just be about shoulder distance apart. So here, my shoulders are back and down like I'm squeezing into my armpits. My core is engaged. I'm going to load into my legs. And then I push the floor away from me. Same thing here, sliding down, really making sure that core is engaged, pushing through the legs. So you'll feel a lot of tension in your hamstrings and that's why this exercise really focuses on that. Okay, let me try it out. If you never deadlift before, you will most likely think this is straightforward, but it's actually not. Once I went through all the reps, it's my lower back that feels the most sore, and that's for another right thing, right? So yeah, that means that you're lifting with your back instead of lifting with your legs. After going through a lot of drills, all of a sudden, I finally understood what I did was wrong. I just trying to be like this, right? Like when you're doing handstands. Like What's that? Just like when you're doing handstands, I wanna... Yeah, you wanna keep it like neutral. But at the same time, I don't wanna round my upper back. Correct. After doing calisthenics all these years, I instinctively retracted my scapula and engaged my core by pushing my lower back in for all pulling moves and protracted my scapula and engaged my core by pushing my stomach in for all pushing moves. This principle is generally correct for calisthenics and the reason why we do this is to fight the external force, which is gravity, in order to maintain a neutral body position. 
However, even though the deadlift is a pulling exercise, the biggest difference is we are facing down and trying to pull the weight up instead of facing up and trying to pull yourself towards the bar. It means we have to retract the scapula to maintain a neutral position. Otherwise, the weight will pull your scapula into a protracted position. It also means we have to engage the core by pushing the stomach in to maintain a neutral spine. Otherwise, the weight will pull your spine into an arch back position. I was engaging my core in the complete opposite direction. That's why I was feeling discomfort on my lower back earlier. The handstand came to my mind because I find it fascinating that in order to do the deadlift correctly, I have to engage my scapula the same way I'm doing calisthenics pulling exercises, but I have to engage my core the same way I'm doing calisthenics pushing exercises. Another mistake I made was looking forward the whole time. Which means my neck wasn't in a neutral position. After correcting it, Look that, there it is. That looks better. Boom. How do you feel? Okay, looking down actually makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I think I got it. After I finally got the technique down, it's time to measure my one rep max. After a few tries on lighter weights, eventually I was able to go all the way up to 125 pounds and successfully did one rep with my arms slightly shaking. I decided not to push further, so 125 pounds would be my max before training. When I woke up the next day, my muscles were extremely sore. It felt like muscles that had never been activated before got activated. I rested for a few days and started to train. The training plan provided by Hooper Spada is like this. The first set is 8 to 10 reps of about 50% 1 rep max, which is around 65 pounds for me. And the second set is 6 to 8 reps of 60% to 65% 1 rep max, which is around 75 pounds for me. And the third set is 4 to 5 reps of 70% to 75% 1 rep max, which is around 90 pounds for me. And the fourth set is 3 to 4 reps of 80% to 85% 1 rep max, which is around 105 pounds for me. And the fifth and sixth set is 1 to 3 reps of 85% to 95% 1 rep max, which is around 115 pounds for me. Since training a deadlift is pretty intense on the body, Hooper's Vita recommended me to train a deadlift for no more than two times per week. I trained and trained and trained. 30 days flew by really fast, and it's time to measure my 1 rep max again. After warming up, I decided to shoot for 135 pounds. I felt pretty strong, so I decided to try 155 pounds. Feeling pretty good, I decided to push myself to see if I could do 165 pounds. Lastly, I decided to see if I could squeeze anything more out of myself and went for 175 pounds. And this happened. I improved from 125 pounds to 175 pounds which is a significant 40% of improvement in 30 days. This proves again that if you are a beginner on something, all you need to do is put in some work consistently and you are guaranteed to see good results. Thanks for watching. After resting my fingers for a little bit over a month, I have just started the rehabbing process with the help of Hooper's Beta and I have been documenting it. I plan to make an update video after going through the rehabbing process for 30 days. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, Jason, for teaching me the technique of the Romanian deadlift in person. If you haven't checked out Jason's channel, Hooper Speda yet, definitely check it out. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my website, geekclimber.com. See you in the next video.